Rather interestingly, the most important race of the NASCAR calendar is this one, the first race of the season. The Daytona 500, the most famous and iconic race in the NASCAR calendar. It's the most popular form of racing in the US and the appeal is that these are cars that you could supposedly buy in a dealership, hence the term stock car racing, even though these cars are anything but stock. In this form of racing, pretty much anything can happen and that's really the appeal. 101,000 fans pack into this stadium, costing $400 million. The atmosphere is electric. Fans travel from all the way across America and even the world to come and watch the Daytona 500. I mean, what's there not to like? Fast cars, loud cars, cheap beer, there's plenty of food. But the best thing about NASCAR is the accessibility to the fans. Now, you could pay for an ordinary ticket and just watch the race and that's fine. But you could pay a little bit more money and enter the inner circle whereby you're in the same area as the drivers, you get to see how the garages work, you could even pass articles of clothing to the drivers and have them sign it for you. You can get as close to the drivers as is humanly possible. Pay a bit more money and have them drive you around the track, which is pretty awesome. You don't get that in F1, you don't get that in motorcycle racing, you don't get that in the Le Mans, but you do get that here at NASCAR. The race itself is electric stuff. Almirola up to cover. Dylan, where will Dylan's he go? Gonna get there. Oh, in there, Almirola. Around he goes. Fast turns, crashes, loud, thundering noise. A few accidents here and there. Round off the bumper of Blaney. And the 2018 winner was a chap called Austin Dillon. And I got to see his car. Now, Austin Dillon's car is actually on display at the Daytona Tour. And if you can't make the race itself, I highly recommend paying the $25 for the All Access Tour, which takes you around the track. It takes you onto the track. actually climb the track and act like a complete tourist, pretty much like I did. This is really kind of steep. <laughs> the tour takes you then onto the media center, where all the media converge after the race to interview the drivers. How 200 journalists set in here. You look at these little things in front of you, They'll plug in their microphones, their laptops, and so on. It also takes you into Victory Lane Park, where they award the winners their trophy, their champagne, and, you know, whatever. It was pretty cool to see. It was pretty cool to be a part of. You also get to climb into the stands and just see how big this place actually is. I must admit there's a lot of walking on the tour and if you can't make the race, definitely, definitely see the tour the day after or whenever you're here. But the highlight of the tour is seeing the winning car and the winning car, still full of confetti, still covered in champagne, still dented up with dings and whatever, it's pretty cool. So, I'm sold. I want to come to the Daytona 500. What do I do? Well, believe it or not, tickets are sold up to a year in advance, so there's no excuse for you not to get a ticket. Rather interestingly, the closer you get to the action, the cheaper the ticket. In pretty much every other sport in the world, the closer you are to the action, the more expensive the ticket. But in NASCAR, it's completely different. The closest you can get to the track, the tickets will cost you about about $100. The higher up you go, the more you'll pay. Tickets have been known to go for over $1,700. So that's really expensive. 
I didn't mind paying the $100 or so just to sit front row, as I actually like being closer to the action, so that pretty much suited me down to a T. If you can't make the race and you wanna come to the stadium tour, you don't need to book, just, just turn up. Just turn up at the gates, pay you $25 for the All Access Tour. I probably wouldn't go for the Speedway Tour. I'd go for the All Access because you get more. It's definitely worth the money. Even if you're not a racing fan, even if you know, you're just passing Daytona to Daytona Beach, it's definitely worth three hours of your time and you'll have a great time. But if you have enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe, comment below. And if you've got any other ideas to add to my bucket list or ideas to your bucket list, Feel free to tweet at me. I'll be sure to reply, and if I get enough tweets, I might go do it. So guys, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next episode. Just the size of this place, the one side of the stadium is actually shorter than the other, and that's because of the curvature of the earth. That's how big this place actually is.